Coming to you direct from Silencer Shop Studios, home of the glass case of emotion. Silencershop.com, the easiest way to buy silencers online, period. Stand by for education, enlightenment, enjoyment, and entertainment. He's not here to talk about your feelings. He's not here to say what you want to hear. He's here to say what needs to be said. Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, please welcome your host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. All right, well, before we go one second further, I need to know, did you, Jared Markle, watch the Artisan Toilet Paper commercial? No, I didn't. (laughs) Should I do that? (laughs) Is it something that could be watched like uh, well, on the radio? Yeah, I, I guess. You, you can watch it while I'm talking. All right, welcome to Wednesday, and uh, we have even more Glenn Tate for you today. We're going to do a question and answer session with our friend Glenn Tate, our new friend, uh, who actually, you know, we, we encounter this quite often, how people agree with us without even knowing that they're agreeing with us. Don't they do that, Jared? Yes. Yes. It's like uh, Glenn has his own Patriot Fire Team without even knowing that he has his own Patriot Fire Team, which is just which it's is crazy. cool. It's crazy. It's crazy. Is there a reason that this is highlighted or I don't need to highlight that? Okay. Uh, I don't know. In my show notes, about. you had something highlighted and I just clicked the button and it went off. Oh, so you had something highlighted. No, I don't think it was me. I think what? it was you. I see your little red cursor there. Yeah. You guys well, know if how If I had works, it highlighted, you? you couldn't click and make it go away. Mm, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. About you have that. power, but not that much power. I do. I do. All right. Well, it is Wednesday. We're going to talk about some some fitness because that's what we like to do. But before we do that, we're going to thank our friends at Crossbreed Holsters, the makers of the oh <laughs> the Super Tuck Deluxe, also known as the Bruce Jenner Commemorative. Boom. Boom. Frog Lube. It just works, and it's extreme. Froglube.com. Century Arms, the sweetest smelling arms maker in the U.S. of A. Attention, new listeners. We produced a free training video series called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. We want you to have access to this life-saving information. Get instant access now at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of those questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. I got a question for you. Yes. Did you roll the regular opening, the normal opening with you and Alex and everything? Yeah, I think. Are you sure you did? Did I? Yeah. I I can't remember hearing it. Yeah, I did. I was looking at show notes. I was reading stuff, and I just knew when it was time for me to talk. Yeah. Because I I really had – I did not hear. All I heard was the end music, and you started fading it, and I knew it was time for me to talk. Interesting. That's like – I'm like this Pavlovian response now. Yeah. It's kind of like he just does it in three, two. Did what you notice when we were filming when we were filming with Tom? Yeah, they said one. I was they like, said no. One. I'm like, dude, because they're like three, two, one. I'm like, you don't say one. We don't say one. You're you're messing me up. <laughs> and they didn't say speeding either. They said yeah. They said speeding. They said I thought they when said they, rolling. Y- well, they did both. They said rolling because I heard him say speeding a couple times. Yeah, so sometimes you you, you got to have your directions. You have to have your set directions because otherwise I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just standing here. So I'm I see an ad right here on my screen and it says, "Get a free Roku two when you prepay three months of Sling TV." Wow. I don't know what that is, but I, I do know. know that Student of the Gun has an app on Roku and you can watch a TV show. Yeah. There. So. Do something like that. Yeah. Before we get into the SWAT Fuel Fitness Talk, let's thank our friends at Silencer Shop for making all this available. For making us loud and other people quiet. Making us louder. Or other making things the world quiet. quieter. Yeah. That's right. Brownells at brownells.com. If you have a gun, and even if you don't, they've got something for you. So check them out. And Duracoat. You can get Duracoat products at Brownells, or you can go to lowerweaponry.com. And don't forget about the uh, Student of the Gun gun tattoo when you're on there shopping around. You know you want to get one. I had a question. Can the student of the gun gun tattoo be applied to the new Taurus bump safe holster? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I don't think so. You don't think so? Before I go any further... 
This is the Swat Fuel Fitness Talk, and I would be wrong if I didn't remind you to go to SwatFuelStore.com and use the promo code SOTG2015 because I want you to be able to take advantage of the savings. And Dano is nice enough to make that possible for us, so please go take advantage of it. Now, today I'm going to make this short and sweet because we've got a long talk with Glenn Tate here, and I don't want to go over the, the time limit. Uh, the topic today is get off your phone, dedicate yourself to your craft. And so when I was in, um, where were we? Memphis? Yeah. Yeah. Memphis, in that Fiji. area. Yeah. In that area of Tennessee, I was at a public gym and I saw several people there that had one hand on their phone. Their phone was up to their ear and the other hand was lifting something. No way. Yes. And my, if you're one of those people, please do not do that at the gym. One, you look like an idiot. You look like and an two, idiot. And two, you're do you're it's a half measure. You're making yourself feel good while not doing anything for yourself at all. And I know some people that would be like, "Oh, well, at least they're doing something." I'm like, "No, they're they you might as well just go sit on the couch." Um but if if and if you see somebody on your phone on their phone at the gym, um I don't even I didn't say anything to any of them cuz they don't care what I have to say. So I wouldn't recommend like making fun of them to their face or anything, but it's just ridiculous. So get off your phone and actually dedicate yourself to your craft. If you're doing something at the gym, if you're lifting weights, if you're running, if you're doing a kettlebell workout, I don't care what you're doing, dedicate yourself to what you're doing in that moment. You will get a much larger benefit from that. There you go. Focus. All right, guys, as I promised, uh, today we're going to talk with Glenn Tate, and we're going to have some, we got some questions from you guys to ask him. So the first question is from Daniel Wilson, and he says, are there any plans on a 299 Days movie? You cut out there, 299 Days, and that's part to cut out. Are there any plans for a 299 Days movie? Uh, yes, there were, and... There may still be. Uh, there was a Kickstarter campaign, by the way, great video. All the team dudes, it's great if you want to see these real live guys. Kickstarter, 299 days. We tried to raise some money, a whole lot of money. Movies. Yeah, <laughs> I learned all about the movie good. business. Wow, costs a lot of money to do that. Um, and and we, we raised a lot of money, but not enough to make a movie. Um, as far as it going on in the future, I'm not actively going out and trying to get that together. A couple of reasons for that. Number one, I'm a lawyer and I like work a lot of my day job. <laughs> and number two, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen and God's going to do it. I know that's, you know, but anyway, um, I would love to do it. Um, I think I, you know, if I may, uh, a, a TV series, not necessarily a network TV cause they couldn't handle this. Their minds would explode. But, um, you know, all the other avenues now for Maybe series, if you, um, if you had Netflix it. and that kind of stuff. Yeah, if you had, if you knew somebody that had their own television channel, their own like twenty four seven on demand television channel that would broadcast on like Roku and Amazon and Apple TV, if you knew somebody like that, then that might be an avenue to go. Yeah, maybe we should talk <laughs> off air. <laughs> uh, but no, that it was thirty six hundred pages, ten books, as I mentioned, ninety two hours of audio, all ten books put together. There's so much material. And believe me, in my mind, I have dozens of side stories and all kinds of other things. I mean, there's so much content there. And there's an audience for it. A whole lot of yeah. people have read or listened to these books. And so to me, it's a, it's a no-brainer. And with all the current events that are going on and, and everybody being attuned to this, you mentioned that chiropractor guy. I mean, you know, <laughs> he, he'd be great for this. Um, he ought to actually not watch a 299 days series or movie and he ought to go out and start walking and running and all that other stuff. Anyway, no. So now, I'd love to, do a movie, to but be there's, fair, there's no solid plan that I can articulate um, to do that. To be fair, chiropractors uh, of all the medical professionals I've ever known, generally chiropractors are in the best shape. Most chiropractors <laughs> I've ever known have been really strong individuals. So there's that. But but lift, <laughs> lifting up heavy things is good, but you need you should like lifting up heavy things doesn't teach you how to like put on a pressure dressing, apply a tourniquet, yeah. put in a nose hose, you know. So. 
Next question from Mark Hyatt says, have you and your team reviewed the Patriot Fire Team concepts? Uh, do you know what the Patriot uh, no, Fire Team is? Yeah, I know. I, I'm vaguely familiar with it. Um, have not. Um, we had Special Forces Ted, a real dude, um, teach us a lot of stuff. So, no, I'd be I'd be interested in, in knowing more about it. Sounds, I mean, sounds like a pretty good thing. Cool. Uh, yeah, he just we'll there's get, a bunch. We'll, of, we'll get you one of those. Yeah, there's a a bunch of questions that have to do with the Patriot Fire Team concept. So uh, we'll just skip those questions. Go on to the next one. It says uh, oh, <laughs> this dude Lee says you'll have to make it a two part show. I heard he I have heard a lot of shows he has been on and he will talk. So <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think this could be three. Somebody's points. already got your number. Uh. That's funny. Uh, but think about it. If you had me on and you said, so tell me about 299 days. And I go, it's a book. <laughs> I mean, that would be terrible. Yeah. That would be terrible podcast and radio. Exactly. Well, so. <laughs> the thing, you couldn't do that on a, well, you couldn't do it on a like live, live show. Radio. You yeah. couldn't do it on a live show because they go, you go 11 minutes, hard break, nine minutes, <laughs> hard break. And we're done. And we'll be back tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Justin Finney says, who is a uh, rather large fan of 299 Days, he says, with the way the current stock market is trending and with the political tor- turmoil that seems to be running rampant, where do you see this country in relation to the book series? Great question. Um, good news and bad news. Are, um, the, the good news is it hasn't happened yet, and the bad news is it's going to happen. Um, in all candor, my predictive skills – People need to factor this in. My track record so far on the timing is 0%. The reason I say that is uh, I think this should have happened already. I'm stunned that it hasn't. I think the Federal Reserve and others have this magic bag of tricks that none of us understand, even how some of this stuff works, negative interest rates and derivatives and crazy stuff that nobody really understands. And they've got this bag of tricks, and they're playing trick after trick. And so they're, they're... prolonging the inevitable. So my timing, I'm at 0%. Everybody, please factor that in. Um, but as far as, you know, it ultimately happening, I think it's mathematically certain. Um, where are we in relation to the book? Good question. Um, probably about a third of the way through book one. Um, and you can see all the things that are that are forming up and that are starting, that are described, the, the political uh, upheaval, uh, the social unrest and and all these other things and unrest I don't mean like violent I mean you know people going on Facebook and saying they want to you know kill every cop and all that other kind of stuff so you you see that so it's it's right on pace but I don't know what the pace is sorry but that's <laughs> that's true cool yeah that, I mean that was that was good that was a pretty good answer uh, Matthew Zeller says why so many haters. Everybody has haters. Every successful man has haters. Did you, you, do you have okay. detractors? Do people not agree with you? <laughs> I've never run into anyone who doesn't agree with me. So yeah, uh, I know. Maybe it's sort of... because they're afraid that that pal, the six foot Korean gunfighter that I hang out with, is like right around the corner, and they're like, "Yeah, we love you." Uh, no, I I don't know. I, there's been a surprisingly few number of haters. Um, I'm kind of kind of disappointed to be quite honest. <laughs> I wanted some haters, doggone it. Um, I think that when you come at it from the regular guy perspective that I have, it's really hard. The normal criticisms are not there. You know, like, well, you say you were on SEAL Team 6, and, and I know you weren't. I mean, that's or You say to do X, Y, and Z and, and, and hold a pistol a particular way, and when I do it this other way, I've shaved three-tenths of a second off my mag reload. That's usually the kind of criticism. <laughs> and, that's, and that's not me because my whole thing is um, I train regularly with a pistol. Pretty good, okay. We've shot with some SWAT guys. I come in the middle of the pack. Um, now, these are part-time SWAT guys in all candor. And so I'm okay. I do enough. I'm surrounded by dudes who are better than me and who are my brothers, and I can count on with my life. That box is checked, and I'm going to go do the nerdy stuff and figure out water supply and how to have my neighbors come to my aid and all that other stuff. So when you're when you're totally humble and normal and laid back and down to earth, it, it tends to reduce the number of haters. So that's my only explanation. There you go. There you go. Uh, Josh Pizzullo says he's from Washington, uh, Grandview, Grandview area, 
And he wants to know what is happening to your home state. What's happening in my home state? <laughs> Didn't you guys just have a big uh, a big protest? Was that recently? An, an organized oh, like uh, an organized they all run protest. Together. Well, I, I um, what? Yeah, what's happening in my state? It's what happens when you have socialists, and I'm not goofing around and playing around with words and throwing that out there. Um, actual socialists, by the way, you know, Seattle City Council, you know, the party designation, you know, there's like on the ballot, there's a choice between a D and an S, Democrat and socialist. Uh, it's, it's when you have one party rule, the Democrats have run Washington State uh, exclusively for decades. The inbreeding and the soft corruption is mind blowing. Um, a bunch of people that think that America's just prosperous because we're America and we're just awesome because we're awesome and nothing bad can happen. So we don't actually need to <laughs> do things to allow businesses to succeed and all that other stuff. You have $15 minimum wage um, in Seattle and uh, people are getting laid off. Um, we have uh, transgendered bathrooms now. There need to be three bathrooms, uh, many places, male, female, and other. Um, and you got that going on. And we have, in one case, a uh, an old man um, goes into a <laughs> bathroom full of girls uh, that are, you know, changing to go swimming. And uh, he's got a perfect legal defense. He identifies as transgender, so he can be there. So you got what's happening in our state, predictable. Um, you know, I would be surprised if Washington State, politically and economically speaking, was an awesome place, given how goofy everybody in this state is. It would stun me if we, you know, were prosperous and all that. So it's predictable is the answer uh, to Josh. Wow. That's crazy. That just, it blows my mind. Uh, Ed Rilo says, <laughs> any chance of training with the group? And you know what? Um yeah, there, there used to be. Um, we used to do uh, shooting classes, had a blast doing it. And, you know, it's funny. Um, I wrote the book, I don't know, probably five years ago. And at the, at the time I wrote it and sort of where the characters are in the, in the book, um, we all had tons of free time. All my guys, you know, were in their mid-20s. And, you know, they didn't have wives and girlfriends and babies and stuff like that. I know, I know I'm, I'm blowing that everyone's getting depressed here. Mm -hmm. But it's really hard for us now. Um, to get together and do stuff for other people. We do have enough time, thank goodness, to get together and do our own stuff. And we quietly go out and do all kinds of things, not just gun stuff. We do logistical stuff. We practice picking people up and stealthily take them from point A to point B and all the, the non-sexy stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do plenty of that, and that's our first priority. So maybe in the future we could do that kind of stuff, but um, it, it's harder to do than it than it sounds, um, you know, because it takes, you know, a weekend, a month, and, and getting all these guys together is is rough for that. Now, for our own stuff, it's not hard to, for us to get together. Right. Uh, Scott Lyon says, any suggestions for a young man about to start law school on how to support and defend the Constitution from the outset? Uh, suggested <laughs> reading, and he says he's hoping to channel the WAB spirit after graduating. Wow. What a fantastic question. Um, good for you, Scott, for doing what you're doing. A couple things, and this is outlined a little bit in 299 Days when I talk about what it was like being in law school, um, being the way I am, and being the way everybody else in law school is. Uh, don't expect anybody um, to understand you, first of all. Just you're going there, consider it like vocational school. You're going there to learn trade. Be nice to people and be social and stuff, but... Um, none of these people remotely understand you. Um, uh, a quick little side story about that that illustrates this well. We're doing this mock trial, and there's a fake set of facts, and there's a, a guy who eyewitnesses say walks into a, a, a restaurant. He's left-handed, and with his left hand, he clicks the safety off, and he starts shooting people. I raise my hand, motion to dismiss. It's impossible. I look at the kind of gun, it was a, like Smith & Wesson Sigma or something. This was the early 90s. I said, the safety is on the left side, and I demonstrated with my hand how it would be uh, impossible, if you're left-handed, to actuate or to take off that safety. And did, did everybody go, hey, you just, you just protected an innocent person from going to jail? Did anybody say, wow, you're you know, really experienced in life, you understand these things? No, we had a conversation about gun control. 
And that's what I'm talking about. Don't expect anybody in law school to understand you. So um, as far as working at a real WAB, there are such places. There are um, often trade associations for um, industries that need to protect themselves from government regulation. You can find them. There are some good um, kind of pro bono legal places out there you might want to look into in my area, uh, Pacific Legal Foundation, uh, the Institute for Justice, try to do an internship or something there and just outwork the competition. Just go and drop by and talk to people and get to know people and volunteer for stuff. And um, it's surprising how, how often that can work out. So don't expect to make a ton of money and have a super easy life and everybody think you're cool because you're a lawyer. I don't even tell people I'm a lawyer. I mean, best man at my wedding was the real um, Steve in the books. He's he's really a logger. Um, so I don't think being a lawyer is particularly cool. In fact, I really don't talk about it much if I don't have to. So if your expectations are set right, it can be great. It's a great way to do good things. It really, really is. Um, as long as you know that you're going to make some personal sacrifices to go do good stuff. So, yeah, good on you, Scott. JD says, uh, Mr. Tate, would you please describe your introduction to SOTG, Student of the Gun? Please describe my introduction. Um, oh, how I knew about you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, um, a friend of mine, mutual friend of mine, Autumn, uh, told me about you guys. So that's that's how I, I learned about you guys. She's very nice. She's a nice lady. Aww. She was wonderful human being. Yeah, she she facilitated the interview for us, and she, Glenn and I were going back and forth in an email thread, and we're like, okay, this day, this time, and he's like, no, this day, this time, and she's like, this is the longest interview process I have ever seen. <laughs> uh, Robert says, for you, is there a political and social conflict living in Washington State, being that you are not the majority? Oh yeah, and uh, I've. I've at least fooled myself into coming up with an answer to how to reconcile these two things. Um, first of all, I start off by, by saying, imagine if you're a Buddhist living in Alabama, right? Um, think about how lonely that would be. Um, and that's how I feel. And if you're a Buddhist living in Alabama, you can't say to yourself, I'm only going to hang out with Buddhists, people that are like me, because, you know, <laughs> that's going to be pretty lonely. Um, and you're not going to really have a social life. I mean, you know, you're, I don't know. So, I accept that most of the people around me um, are very, very different than me, not just politically, but the I call the males around me um, for the most part are not men. Um, the women around me for the most part are not, you know, what I view as like sort of complete and comprehensive, um, you know, women. I mean, they, they you know what I mean? They're, I, I think there are traditional roles. I'm not super uptight about it, but um everyone's sort of androgynous, yeah. <laughs> I guess is the best way to put it. And so, um, yeah, hang out and they're friends of mine and I don't, I don't get uptight about politics. I never talk about it. It's also a good idea for me given what I do. And if I'm that quote, ultra conservative, um, hate to say it, it's really bad for business. And, uh, I need to think about that. I mean, I have, you know, family to provide for now. What do I do? I run off and I secretly write books that a whole lot of people read. So I'm not, you know, withdrawing from the community. Um, I'm just talking to the people that I can actually talk to and persuade and not goofing around with, with everybody else. Um, it, it's so funny um, how, how it is being uh, a conservative or libertarian or whatever I am here in Washington state, I will get to know people and they don't know anything. That's the other thing. All the liberals assume everybody else is liberal. It's hilarious. We'll be talking. And I actually had a guy to submit a story to illustrate this guy said to me one time, he found out I was a conservative. He said, you're so open-minded. How can you be a conservative? And I looked at him, I said, who's closed-minded here? Um, so people just, you know, either like you or you, they don't. And then, then they find out about politics. And if it, if it upsets them, then they're jerks and they were a waste of time anyway. Um, that's part one. Part two, yes, I guess I am long winded, but part two is I think God put me and my guys and people involved in this enterprise in Western Washington, specifically at the cabin for a particular reason. 
I think we're supposed to be there. I think we're supposed to form up the community as described in the book and help people and do good stuff. And I think I've been placed here because <laughs> there's no other reason, <laughs> no rational reason. Right. So, um, that's, that's how I reconcile it. Um, I'm not going to pick up and leave. Um, I really enjoy being married to my wife and I really enjoy my kids and I don't think they'd come if I moved to, you know, Texas or something. So, um, I got to balance it out and play the hand I'm dealt and not expect everybody to be like me with an asterisk to that. I don't expect everyone around me to be like me. However, when the collapse comes and most of these people figure out that they're goofy and they have completely messed up worldviews, they'll probably end up being kind of like me. And if so, welcome, uh, welcome to the party. If they're not like me, then, um, I really don't care. They're probably going to live in Seattle in some safe loyalist area. And I'm going to be where the Patriots are running things. And I'm going to shrug and just kind of go on with life. So it's a very practical, unemotional uh, approach to that. I'll say this. I've been so used to being the minority that I probably wouldn't even understand what it's like to be part of the majority. If I moved to Texas and everybody was like me, I'd probably be thinking things were strange just because I'm used to being the the weirdo and the outcast. So, um, yeah, but there are a lot of people who live in what I call occupied territory and, uh, we have to come up with coping mechanisms and the, you just gotta, you gotta roll with it. You gotta accept that you were, you're in America. America's the way it is right now. And it's still the best country on earth. I agree. Well, the, 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 the free America and the slave state America, that are people you know, say, oh, what do you want me to do, move? I'm like, well, here's the deal. You need to, to jive with the fact that every day you get up and you go to work, if you live in New York, if you live in Massachusetts, California, whatever, you get your paycheck, look at your pay stub, and look at how much of the money that you earned is going towards your own subservient, basically enslavement. You're paying the Seattle government, the Washington state government, the Massachusetts government, whatever. You're giving them your money so that they can go and create more regulations. They can hire more bureaucrats and they can control you even more. And if you're good with that and if you're happy with that, you're like, well, I don't mind, you know, contributing. It's like, it's, it's kind of the forging your own chains uh, analogy, I guess you could say. And, and if you can live with that, then rock on. Uh, that's fine. But I will, I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not going to like get into the 299 days, but people say, well, where should I not live? And my kind of easy answer is if you live in a city that has an HOV lane, you're effed. <laughs> you, you are screwed uh, because you are literally surrounded a hundred to one with, uh, well, not just, not just peasants, but, People that with parasites, you are surrounded by by uh, by human parasites. And the moment it, it's a classic example. I don't know how much research you did uh, or on Katrina and and New Orleans post Katrina, but New Orleans post Katrina is an is a perfect example of just how rapidly a society can and will break down when the vast majority of the populace are parasites. And you call me whatever you want, but the fact of the matter is, when you have people that, that rise and sleep under the blanket of government protection, and they've been accustomed to everything being given to them, provided for them, they have a 100% absolute entitlement mentality, well, then tomorrow morning they, they get up and there's no power and there's no water, and there's, they can't go to the bank or the ATM and get their – or take their card to the store and get their free whatever. They have no skills. They have nothing. And those people almost instantly, like literally with that drop of a hat, go animalistic. And for, for all of you guys that are new listeners out there that have never heard the show before, dad was actually there. He was doing security protection for um, some people in – New Orleans after the storm. So he was he experienced that firsthand. He knows what happened. Yeah, I, I saw it with my own eyes, and uh, you know, we, and we forget this. 
and, and we soften it and we and we uh, you know kind of mo- oh you know da, 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 da. So, you know but the the fact is if you live in a city that has an HOV lane and and doesn't matter whether it's a, a man made disaster or a natural disaster within the first twenty four hours you know it's like when the lights go out and, and they're riding in Chicago because the it's like human beings don't require electricity to stay alive you know. Uh, the power's been out for an hour, and, and you're, like, looting stores and killing people. Uh, if you live amongst that, you're deliberately handicapping yourself. So you know, just understand what you're doing. Uh, one thing I just realized in, in listening to you, and by the way, Katrina, I, I wasn't there firsthand, and, and I kind of wish I was in some way to see this with my own eyes, but I was glued, you know, to the TV set, and, and it was one of the models I used for how quickly – America can break down into chaos. One thing is I was listening to you and you're talking about Massachusetts and everything. I realized um, Washington state has good gun laws. And I was thinking about what would it take for Washington? What would Washington state have to do to make me say, okay, that's it. I'm gone. And that would be New York or Massachusetts or Chicago or California gun laws that would get me to move. So it's not a hundred percent. I'm here, you know, for the long haul, it's, it's that. And so anyway, it, it, I hadn't thought of that before. I hadn't realized that. So um, thanks. I really <laughs> realized that well, from listening to you. If they, you know, tomorrow they come up with a Connecticut style forced registration, you know, are you going to get in line with the other slaves? Yeah. And, and Well, they already tried that, didn't they? In DC, in, in Washington? Washington yeah. Well, they, they kind of, I mean, you guys have got that, uh, the universal background check thing, right? Where you, your guns, yeah. no, your guns. Your yeah, guns are no longer your property. Course, yeah, it's not real. I mean, it's not registration all of Connecticut. It is going through FFLs for everything, and, and there's argument about whether there's a record of that and all that other stuff for handguns. There's a state um, licensing. It's not a license to own a pistol, but there's a state document that's involved. I don't know how long those are kept. So it's, I don't know, um, it's not exactly registration, but it is going through FFLs, which is for a transfer, uh, which is well, somewhat you, common you, in well, you've, good no, chunks of the country. You, well, you've lost your property rights, and this is what people never understand. We always talk about Second Amendment. Ah, Second Amendment, Second Amendment. Nobody talks about the Fourth. Nobody talks about the Fifth. Nobody talks about the Fourteenth Amendment. Nobody talks about individual private property rights. And when you I'm, – and I'm not an attorney. I didn't even say it at Holiday and Express last night, but I'll throw this <laughs> at you, Mr. Attorney. When you must seek government approval to transfer a lawfully owned object from one person to another, that is not the epitome. That is not the definition of private property rights. It is a privilege because you say, oh, no, no, it's no big deal. It's just a few this dinner. What happens when the bureaucrat on the other end of the phone says no? Oh, that would never, that happens. What happens when the, here you are. You are a sovereign citizen, a lawful citizen. You are not a felon. You're not a bad guy. You are a person. And you bought a lawfully owned object, a rifle, a handgun, a shotgun, doesn't matter. That is lawfully owned property. And you wish to engage in private commerce with another citizen, same qualifiers. But you can't do that now without an intermediary, which is the government, giving you the approval to do that. And at some point in time, the faceless bureaucrat on the other end of the phone can say no. So that puts you in a position now. So do you obey the faceless bureaucrat and cease your lawful transaction or not? If you do, if you continue with the transaction, now you just turned yourself into, you went from being a ordinary Lawful, law-abiding citizen, everyday Joe, I got a job, a family, I got this shotgun, I want to sell it to my buddy Jim, he wants to buy it from me for $300, good to go, no problem. A faceless bureaucrat on the other end, for whatever reason, I mean, heck, you could be on a no-fly list because, just because, um, and they say no. So you are, you are in a position now where you must obey and cease that transaction or just say Screw them. I'm an American. I don't need your permission and do it anyway. And what did you just do? You just put yourself in a position of becoming a felon. So when you allow 
a government to tell you whether or not you can lawfully transfer property from one person to another, that is no longer private property. That is an object that you have the privilege of owning. The government has given you the privilege of possessing it or the privilege of transferring it. And at any point in time, that's the trick with privileges, at any point in time, the privilege can be rescinded. And that's exactly what we've got in, we've got in Connecticut now. We have people going to prison because they didn't get in line and look for their permission slip. We have people in New York, police showing up at the, at the house of a recently deceased husband demanding their guns. Because as soon as you die, your permission slip from the government to own a handgun has expired. And you will surrender it. This isn't a joke. This isn't paranoid conspiracy theory. This is actual fact. So uh, then that is that is the sick and insidious thing about, quote, the universal back. It seems so reasonable. How could you be against it? Until you break it down and say, well, I want to sell my my truck to my buddy Jim for $1,000. Well, before you sell your truck to Jim, you need to go down to the BMV and you need to get permission from the lady behind the counter at the BMV to sell the truck to Jim. And you're like, screw that. It's my truck. I paid for it. I own it. He wants to give me $1,000 and I'll sell it to him. He can go down and put tags on it. Nope. The BMV is going to tell you whether or not you are allowed to sell that truck to Jim. Would you would you, be, good news would you be down with that? This, this is passed by initiative, uh, this dumb law uh, in Washington State. After two years, initiatives can be uh, overwritten by a simple majority vote in the legislature. And um, stay tuned. That might be happening in the 2017 session. <laughs> but everything you're saying is true. I mean, you know, philosophically and, and intellectually is 100 percent true. And the other, I don't know, silver lining, it's not good enough, but it's a silver lining. Um Every cop I've talked to, and I have a lot of cop friends in various parts of the state, they laugh at the idea of enforcing this law. So good on them. Now, it's still a law, and it's still a problem, but um, uh, I'm just, yeah, that's the one bad part of Washington State's gun laws. Now, did Oregon do the same thing? Did you do it first, and they did it second, or they did it first, and you did it second? I, I honestly can't recall. I think they did it second, now that it's a bit of a memory. That's that's interesting, and I think that good if job, people, Washington. If people <laughs> if people turn the argument from ah oh, Second Amendment, Second Amendment to this is my private property, I think that more people would listen. But that's just me. I'm oh, just, here's I'm another just a dude. Yeah, here's another thing. As far as that particular law goes, um, I have a a friend, uh, and she's a woman went through a divorce, and uh, her husband, uh, an ex husband, I guess, came back and uh, actually actually hurt her. And she called me, you know, what do I do? And I wanted to loan her a handgun, but couldn't because of this stupid law. Mm. Now, luckily, the bad guy did not return. But, I mean, what a terrible position to put to put her in. I mean, that's that's unconscionable. So, yeah. Uh, I've got two more questions for Mr. Tate here. So we're going to finish up with these questions. Uh, Alan K says any plans for another book series great question i get that a lot um the answer is at this point no but it could happen and here's why i say that i mentioned that i would just sit down and write this thing and i was at the keyboard and all these amazing people i'd never written before and it all just came together um and i think god wanted me to get a message out and i i think i've done that i mean he's done it but i've done my part and I don't have a big message burning in my mind like I did when I sat down to take on this kind of silly venture when you think about it, never been published. You write 10 books and then you call a publisher. I mean, who does that? That's dumb. But um, it, here's why I say it could happen. Um, there could be another thing that needs to get out, another message or something. And I know that, you know, God can turn that switch on in my head and I can just sit down and and do this stuff. So it's a bit of a, of a maybe answer, but I could see it happening, but there are no current plans for it. Um, I'd really like to do it, but I'm not going to just put out stuff, you know, just to put out stuff. You're not going to force it. Yeah. You're not going to do a, uh, a boondock saints too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <Ron. laughs> 
Or when Fonzie jumps the shark in Happy Days. <laughs> Don't jump the shark. There'll be none of that. Yeah, there's there's so <laughs> many. Our world is filled with sequels that just shouldn't be there. Um, the the whole the whole spinoff series, Joni loves Chachi. There you go. That's all. There I have you to go. Say. Joni loves Chachi. Just because we need to. I, I feel like that's what happens <laughs> to to Dad when he writes his book. Is he's like, oh, I have a message, and it's it channeled through him into the paper. And he comes to me and he's like, I have, I have five books written. What, what, what do you want me to do with them? I'm like, what? <laughs> well, how did you do that in two days? Uh, all right. Ne- next I don't question. write five books in two yeah, days. but Close enough. Uh, Arturo says, this is going to be the last question. Arturo says, uh, what, if anything, would you change if you were to start writing 299 days today? Wow. Um, this is a very unprincipled answer, but um, – I don't know. I found that honesty is the best policy. In all honesty, I would not have written as much stuff about my wife as I did. Um, She was not super thrilled. Uh, I'm going to put that mildly. Not super thrilled to find out that I secretly wrote a book, and a lot of it's about her kind of bad attitudes. Now, she's changed quite a bit, and the bad attitudes are are pretty much gone. So, you know, good for her. But... um, I hate to sound like a wuss, but it's the truth. It took a tremendous toll um, on her and me, and um, I would have probably done it differently. The flip side of that is that honesty about a wife who thinks you're crazy for prepping has resonated with tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people, and it's probably helped them quite a bit. And maybe that's one of the things God wanted me to do, and maybe it's a sacrifice I need to make. I'll say past tense, a sacrifice that I did make because I think things are fine now. But, um, yeah, that's that's the honest answer to that question. As far as content and all that sort of plot stuff and facts that are in there, wouldn't have changed a thing. Um, it's it's great the way it is. Sorry, but it's true. So, yeah. Um, no, you're yeah, not, so, you don't right, have to be sorry. Book series about your wife being mean and stuff. And she ends up being better in the books, by the way. Yeah, that's kind of a kind of a bad idea to do. So if uh, you're thinking about doing it out there, um, Arturo or anyone else, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> no, we, we do that all the time, uh, or, or we get that question all the time. We're like, my wife thinks I'm crazy for, or my wife's not. You know, my wife wasn't, she wasn't anti-gun by any stretch of the imagination when we got together, but she had very little experience. And at one point in time, and this is early on, she's like, I don't think, see why you think you need to have so many guns and the truth is we were young and young couples don't have money i mean i did not have that many i might have had five or six you know and uh, and, but in her mind you know why do you think you need to have so many and she acts and i don't know who she was listening to maybe it was her sister or maybe it was somebody but at one point she said well what if i decide you know what if i tell you that it's either me or your guns and i was like oh we want to. Oh, we want to play the hypothetical when, game. Oh, huh? uh, that's when you invoke your Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. That's right. But, but you answer know, to that question. Well, in the in what you guys need to understand, you're like, well, you know, guns are just objects. No, guns are instruments of liberty. And if you're willing to surrender your love and your desire to have liberty for the comfort and convenience of having a companion, then you actually don't have liberty anyway. So you say that you own firearms as instruments of liberty, or maybe you don't. But if you say that your guns are not just toys, that they're instruments of liberty, but you're willing to sacrifice those for some security and convenience, well, Ben Franklin, safety and security, then you never really had it in the first place. And uh, you also need to check and make sure that you have testicles. And, and you might be a, so- a soy-fed mangina. Um, <laughs> But the, the, and here's what I'll tell young guys: if your wife says it to you, either a she's looking for an out, or b she's bluffing, because if she's willing to leave you because you won't get rid of your guns, you you need to just go ahead and broom her and move on with your life because life is going to take a lot longer. It's, you got more life ahead of you. If you're 22 years old and you got a woman that's like, well, you either getting rid of these guns or I'm leaving. Bye. Because bye, Felicia. Yeah, bye. Uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, because. You, if you if you cave at age twenty two, if you cave to oh, blackmail, God. you're you're Your setting over. yourself Your up over. for an entire life of 
you're you're, you're going to be constantly hiding in your man cave and you're going to drink and you're going to go and you're going to flander and you're going to do that because so yeah i know it might hurt it's like pulling off a band-aid or whatever it might be inconvenient for this moment but in in the scheme of things uh sometimes you just got to tell your wife no and you, you have, absolutely so you got to be the man and you that's that's your role now, I know there are women listening, too, but women, sometimes the man's role is no. You're supposed to be there to nurture, not to nag. Two ends. And nurturing works better than nagging, by the way, ladies. Yeah. And trust me on that one. It works way better. If, if, you, if ladies that are listening, if you want to be able to get what you actually want, if you want your husband or boyfriend to do what you want them to do, uh, pick up the book by Dale Carnegie, How to Win F- friends and influence people and listen to it very carefully. Man, that's been around forever. Yeah, I know. It's an old book, but not enough people listen to it, apparently. Uh, all right, we've had Mr. Tate on here for about an hour and a half yep, now, and I, I don't want to take up too much of his time, so we're going to say our goodbyes and thank yous. Oh, Can we do that? Yeah, we're going to break. Yeah, we're going to do that, and we're going to break this. And uh, Glenn, in case, well, this is going to be two different days. Uh, right. Maybe three. Maybe three. Yeah. Depends on how Jared cuts it up. Well, thank you very much to our friend Glenn Tate for finally, after months of teasing, joining us on Student of the Gun Radio. All of you hippies out there, go to 299days.com. That's the numbers, 299days, or you can just Google it or duck it. Or if you're one of those weird people that doesn't know how to use a computer and you have Bing, uh, you can do that, too. I I mean, we won't won't hold it against you. We'll just laugh behind your back. All right. (laughs) Thank you, Glenn. Any parting words for the people? No, it was great. What a great conversation. It was it was great talking to you guys. And it wasn't just about book stuff. It was about the bigger issues in life. I mean, we, you know, wives and, and politics and all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, you know, it's like a that, that, was, that was good stuff. So thank you for having me on. I really appreciated it. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you for indulging us for three full days. So. Uh, of material with our friend Glenn Tate, 299 days. Make sure that you uh, give him some love, man. Go over to his site, go to the website, whatever. Just let him know that you heard about him at Student of the Gun. I'm sure a lot of you already had. 299days.com, I believe. Is that correct? 299days.com. I'm sure he has a Facebook page and all that good stuff. So, yes. Just to show him some love. All right, tomorrow is Thursday, last public hour of the week. But, uh, Fear not, fear not. We will be back within 24 hours with even more hilarity and hijinks. How's that sound? Go to studentofthegun.com, sign up for the seven training tips that could save your life. If you have not done that already, you are wrong, and you can fix yourself. What are you laughing at over there? (laughs) These idiots on the Liberty Mastermind. (laughs) Oh, if you want to be part of the Liberty Mastermind, (laughs) then you can go to (laughs) studentofthegunradio.com, click on Become a Member, and join us for... $1, $1, you get 30-day trial for only a dollar. If you don't like it after that, you can cancel. No questions asked. All you have to do is let me know, and I will make sure that you are taken care of. Uh, on that note, I'm going to go look at the Liberty Mastermind group and enjoy myself. <laughs> <laughs>